My name is Vahid Pizzas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Of course. So my name is Naomi. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm the CEO of Street Society. We're an accelerator for emerging, mostly streetwear designers. We help them with their business development, kind of strengthen their business infrastructure. And if they need funding, we also connect them to venture capitalists as well. So in your personal opinion, based on working with individuals, what would you say are the top three causes of businesses not making it in that industry? What are the top three failures? Yeah, um, the number one thing is education. And I don't mean um, conventional education like a degree. I just mean knowledge about the industry, right? So one of the best ways to get that education is through internship and through mentors. So that's number one. Another part is poor leadership. You know, I feel like I, you'll, you'll hear me preach about this all the time, but as, as much as entrepreneurs work on their personal development and work on building themselves as an individual, their business will usually follow suit. So um, that's two things. And of course the team, but even the team that you have is heavily reliant on the type of person that you are and your ability to lead that team. So, yeah. So how do they go get educated about? So you said internship. Mm -hmm. Are there a lot of businesses that are willing to take interns like that, knowing that they're possibly grooming their own competition for future? Um. I think so, because most real entrepreneurs know that it takes a lot of work to build something. There are very, there are very few things where someone can absolutely steal your idea and succeed at it. I'm a big advocate for, I don't care, you can take my idea, because it takes work to build a company. It takes work to build a business. So if they're if they committed enough to put in the work, then so be it. You know, ideas are a dime a dozen. There are very few things that are new under the sun. But as long as they're willing to put in the work, then so be it. But I think most entrepreneurs can use the extra help. And if it's the right fit, what we don't like is when we get someone that we invest the time to train you and you're not an asset to the company. You know, you end up leaving or whatever the case may be. Okay. Now, as far as uh, the, the second thing that you mentioned was, was definitely leadership talk about le what, what do you mean leadership in what sense are you speaking to leadership because we're using the word very loosely these days yeah um well leadership in this sense i mean the head of the company right but that also mm -hmm. means what is your style of driving the car driving the vehicle that is your company mm -hmm. because ultimately while no one can do it themselves we all need a team if you want to build a big company um, it's dependent on you. The dream started with you and it's going to end with you. So if you don't wake up every day driving your team to motivate them and things like that, then your, your company is going to fall by the wayside. So let's say I suck at leadership. Let's say I just don't know it. I'm new to the space. How do I go to learn that? What, what's the process? Um, leadership, the way to mm -hmm. learn is to find mentors in that space. Um, you can find virtual mentors such as authors and, you know, there are plenty of people. I can send you a list if you want. I'm sure uh, your platform, you guys are really big on things like that. So I'm sure you have resources, but I would start with virtual mentors. Who are the top five leaders that you love the way they, they lead their company? You love the fact that they have a cult following. Companies that have a cult following usually have great leaders at the top. So I would start there and then kind of go from there. Cool. So here's my question. When you're doing the leadership, what's the matrix that you know if you're doing a good job or you're not doing it or you could improve? Because a lot of times with the Fortune 500 companies, we're looking at the CEOs. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they do shady shit to bring the numbers up to inflate the performance. And a lot of people correlate that with, oh, they're doing a good job. So right. at what point, that's a that's an exaggeration to the max that, that's obvious to me that I see all the time, right? I'm just bringing an example, but it could also be at the small scale too. You don't have to be a Fortune 500 company. So how do you know you're doing it right? 
Yeah, um, I mean, that's hard, especially, you know, with the example that you give where people are kind of inflating numbers or kind of not really being transparent. I think history will then be the thing to look at. You know, you can fake it for a year or two, but really long term, it's hard, nearly impossible to fake it. And also, I say, look at your results. And I don't mean performance, but what is your turnover for your team? How, how long do people stay with you when they do come on board? Um, you know, those are some areas to look at to determine whether or not someone has a great leader at the top or not. So how often should the leadership or individuals in the position of leadership should inspect their performance or results? I say keep an open door policy as often as you can. You know, in business, every day matters. So I wouldn't, you know, if you keep an open door policy where your team feels like they can always come to you, should there be a problem, that's the first step. And I would do like at least monthly meetings just to reflect, you know, how am I doing? Any feedback? How can I improve? How can I better support you guys to help you feel like you can accomplish and meet your goals? So, yeah. So what do you do for your self-development? What's your method? I am committed, you know, wholeheartedly. I understand, number one, I embrace the fact that personal development is a journey. It's not a destination. You're not going to jump into this perfect self, right? But I'm constantly consuming content that will help improve me. I do workshops. I, I pay coaches, you know, in areas where I need the help. Um, yeah, it's a journey that I'm committed to for life. So, yeah. At what, at what point did you realize that that was important? Because I think that's a... That's a big, key, important um, turning point for Absolutely. a lot of individuals, especially in business and entrepreneurship. The day that you realize that I don't have it all together and I got to ask for help or seek out mentorship. Yeah. Um, in terms of mentorship, it took me a while because I can't, I mean, there's a whole background that I'm not going to explain on this call, but it took me a while to understand that it's okay. I'm valuable enough because I have, I come from this mindset where I only want to come to you if I have something to offer. And um, I found that I wasted a lot of time that way. And, um, you know, what made me realize that I need to value mentorship is basically looking at my life's result. I knew that I was heavily driven by passion. I wanted good things for my life, but I wasn't seeing the result. Right. But, but then when I look at other people who are doing it, I'm like, how are they different from me? How can I learn from them? In general, I'm like an introvert. I'm always observing, but to actually be proactive in that process really helped me out a lot. Awesome. So if you had to tell somebody, okay, so let's, let, me, let, me, let me present it to you. There are individuals that are going to go through challenges today because of the circumstances that we're going. Some individuals may not be motivated. They may not have the stamina to keep on and go. So what is your recommendation for people that are, having challenges at the moment um the first thing is to know that it's okay that you're not alone there are more people like you than ones that are not because i feel like that's a message that that is being circulated a lot nowadays is that oh during covid if you don't have hustle in you if you can't build a company during this time then you never you never had it in you and that's not the case you know it's hard to really process what's going on and to allow yourself to feel that right the other thing is to try to find communities that are like-minded. So join like Facebook, Facebook groups. I don't know if you have a mastermind. Obviously you do. Join mastermind so that you can, you know, connect with people who are going through things that are similar as you. Because if you're comparing yourself to people that are at different levels, then you, it's easy to feel like you're an outcast or whatever the case may be. So that would be my suggestion. How do people find you? Um, Instagram is the best way. Um, I'm Queen Naomi or on Street Fashion Week Instagram. Fantastic. And listen, I like those those styles you got. I just never got mine. So if you need me to send you my address to get some of those samples, I like some of the stuff you got. So I got you. It's, it's cool. Our designers are always looking to get their products in the hands of um, people. So please connect. Listen, use me, abuse me. I put it on. Just Give me a nice, cool design. I just wear it all day long over here I, when I do live session. If it's a hat or with, if it's with a the shirt or whatever. That you connect with, we would love to have you wear some of our stuff. So, 
I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking this easy time out of your schedule being here. And you're you're in LA, but you're not based out of LA, right? No, I live in Brooklyn, but um, I've been in LA for the past couple months, um, kind of quarantined here with my family and stuff. So, but I'm headed back on, on Friday. So. All right, definitely stay safe. And hopefully we can do a few more videos with you down the line. Definitely, anytime, okay? You got to talk to you soon. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in.